In this video, we're going to look at another example of how we can use Thevenin's theorem to simplify circuits into what's called the Thevenin equivalent circuit. Now, if you're not really sure about Thevenin's theorem and you've missed our first video, I would recommend going back where we cover the three steps required to simplify any given circuit to a Thevenin equivalent circuit. But in this video, we're going to apply those three steps again and try and simplify this circuit here. So step one, if you remember, was to use the voltage divider rule to work out the voltage on the output terminals. So again, I'm going to label these terminals A and B. Now, this circuit has three resistors in it, R1, R2 and R3. And the voltage divider rule involves splitting our supply voltage, which in this case is 9 volts, a 9 volt battery there on the left, into separate voltages across each of the resistors. But one thing to consider is a resistor is only going to have a voltage across it if it is carrying a current. We know Ohm's law V equals I times R. Well, if the current is zero, then that means the voltage is going to be zero. And so what we can do is we can make this easier for ourselves by first of all looking at this circuit and considering first of all that two of these uh, resistors are going to be carrying a current because they're in a complete circuit. So R1 and R2 are part of a current loop and a complete circuit and they're going to be carrying a current and therefore they're going to have a voltage dropped across them. Whereas R3 doesn't have a current traveling through it because it's what we call open circuit. Terminal A at the moment isn't connected to anything and so current is not going to flow through R3 and so if current doesn't flow through R3 the voltage across R3 is going to be zero. So when we're setting up our formula for the voltage divider rule we only need to consider R1 and R2. Now with the voltage divider rule and with step one of our Thevenin's theorem we're interested in which of those two resistors we're measuring across because that's where the uh, terminals are placed in this instance. So the terminals A and B, if you look at the circuit, we can see them as being measuring across R2 um, because R3 we can ignore but A and B are actually measuring across R2 here. And so what we can do when we set up our potential divider rule is we can take that into account because we can say that the Thevenin voltage, VTH, is equal to the supply voltage, 9, multiplied by a fraction. And just like we covered in the voltage divider rule video or the Kirchhoff's voltage law video, we say that whichever resistance we're measuring across goes on the top of our fraction. So in this case, the 560 is going to go on the top of our fraction. On the bottom of the fraction, we put both resistors in the uh, potential divider or voltage divider added together. So the only two resistors are R1 and R2 in our voltage divider. Uh, so that's 330 plus 560. And if I calculate that, I get a result of 5.66 volts. So 5.66 volts is our Thevenin uh, voltage. Step two involved working out the total resistance from terminal A to terminal B. Now in this case, I'm not too bothered about where current is flowing in this circuit because we're not starting at the supply and going around our circuit. We're starting at terminal A and going to terminal B. So step two said to short out any voltage supplies. So I can do that here by replacing our um, battery with, with a wire. So I've short circuited that uh, battery there. And we're going to work out the total resistance from terminal A to terminal B. So starting at terminal A, first of all, we proceed through the circuit, through this resistor R3, the 820 ohm resistor. And then we reach a junction point here where we split. And we can either go through R1, round to terminal B, or we can go through R2 to terminal B. So because there's a split for these two resistors here, R1 and R2, we can say that they must be in parallel. So I have one resistor in series, followed by this junction, this split 
and then I have two resistors in parallel before we get round to circuit B. And so if I was to write that in a, in a kind of shorthand, I would say that the Thevenin resistance is equal to 820 plus 560 in parallel with 330. Now that double slash there, like in the previous video, is just my shorthand for parallel resistors. Now, if you're not sure about how to work out parallel resistors, I would recommend having a look back at the video where we look at series and parallel resistors. But I calculate the parallel resistors there to come to a total of 207.64 ohms. So we can simplify this by saying that's 820 plus our two parallel resistors, 207.64 ohms. And that now gives me a total of 1027.64 ohms. And that's my uh, Thevenin resistance. So finally, the last step here is we can go back to our original circuit and we can say that we can simplify this circuit down now to just two components. We've said that the Thevenin equivalent circuit is just one DC power supply connected to one resistor in series. And so our equivalent circuit looks something like this. And we said that we'd calculated our Thevenin voltage to be 5.66 volts. So I'll mark that on there and we'd calculated our Thevenin resistance to be 1027.64 ohms. So I can mark that on there. So, like we said in the previous video, the idea is that these two circuits are totally equivalent to one another. We can take measurements of voltage across the terminals A and B, A and B, and we should get the same result. We could measure the current from A to B, in either circuit and we should get the same result. We can measure the resistance and so forth and we should get the same result. These two circuits are completely equivalent to one another. One last thing I want to think about in this circuit is if we add a load to this circuit to complete it. At the minute, this circuit is what we call an open circuit. It's not a complete circuit. And so what we can think about doing is adding a load to this circuit which completes it. Now, in my example here, we'll say that the load is just another resistor. So I'm adding another resistor. I'm going to call it RL, the load resistor. And let's say that that resistor has a resistance of 500 ohms. So I want to think now about what's now going to happen in my circuit now that I know that the load resistor is 500 ohms. Well, first of all, by adding that resistor in, we're completing the circuit, and so now a current is allowed to flow through that circuit. But we're also changing the voltage by adding that resistor in, and we'll see that in just a second. Let's use the potential divider rule again to work out the new voltage from A to B. So, setting up our potential divider like we did before, we say that the, um, the voltage across the load, VL, is equal to the supply voltage. Now I'm looking at my equivalent circuit on the right hand side. So the supply voltage is 5.66 volts multiplied by a fraction. On the top of that fraction I put whichever resistor I'm measuring across. So in this instance from A to B I'm still measuring across that load resistor. So 500 is going to go on the top here. On the bottom, I'm going to put both my resistors added together. I've got my Thevenin resistor, 1027.64, plus the 500, which I've added on there. So now when I complete that, I get a new voltage of 1.85 volts. So by adding that load resistor in, I've changed the output voltage, it, which was the Thevenin uh, voltage of 5.66. I've changed that and now it's 1.85 volts. Let's think about the current in my new circuit now because it's a complete circuit. Current is going to be allowed to flow through this circuit so I'll have a, a current I which flows through all of those components there. And we can calculate I just by using Ohm's law. We can say that I is V divided by R. Well V in this case is 5.66 and R 
is two resistors added together in series. I've got the 1027.64 and I've got the 500. So the total resistance in this uh, series circuit is going to be 1527.64. And if I calculate that, I get an answer of 3.71 times 10 to the minus 3. 3.71 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. Now, we know that 10 to the minus 3 is a multiplier for milliamps. We can say rather than 3.71 times 10 to the minus 3 amps, we could just as easily say 3.71 milliamps. So we've calculated the voltage across our uh, load resistor here. And we've also calculated the current that goes through both resistors that goes through the whole circuit. So the last thing that I can do is I can calculate the power in my circuit here. Because what I can do is I can say that power is voltage um, multiplied by current. Now what I want to do is I want to work out the power in just this load resistor. And so what I have to do is I have to be careful about which values I use. Power, I'm going to say it's the load power, um, or the power in the load there. So I've added an L to the, the power term. And I'm going to do the same for the voltage. I'm going to use the load voltage. The current is the same current throughout, so I'm not too bothered about that. But finally, we can say we know the load voltage. We worked it out just above there. Uh, we said that it was 1.85 volts. So I can say that my formula here for power is 1.85 multiplied by current, which we said was 3.71 times 10 to the minus 3. And that gives me an answer of 6.68 times 10 to the minus 3, or better expressed as 6.68 milliwatts, the unit of power. So, Hopefully this uh, video has been useful to look at a slightly more complicated example of Thevenin's theorem and how we can go from uh, a more complicated circuit and simplify it down to a more simple Thevenin equivalent circuit. But more than that, we can then start to think about what happens when we add a load resistor to that circuit and how that changes some of the values. And finally, to calculate the power in that load resistor.